Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is the fourth video in a series on solving systems using Gauss-Jordan elimination and augmented matrices. You should already be familiar with what an augmented matrix is and with Gauss-Jordan elimination, how to solve systems using that method. Now we're stepping into what happens if you get infinite solutions. In other words, what happens if you have dependent equations within your system? And how does that look when you're working with uh, a matrix and with Gauss-Jordan elimination? One thing to do uh, to remember is that the augmented matrix represents a background system of equations. So remember when you got infinite solutions before when you're solving systems of equations, you would end up working, 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 and you derive at like zero is equal to zero or five is equal to five or something like that. These are called identities. And when you arrive at these identities, something that's always true, that tells us that two of our equations must be the same. There's a redundancy basically in the system of equations they've handed us. And so two of those equations meet at an infinite number of points. And so that's exactly what you're working for, looking for here. That if two equations in the system intersect at an infinite number of spots, your um, your augmented matrix, as you're going through and doing the Gauss-Jordan elimination method, will end up with a row full of zeros. If it has a row full of zeros, let's just say it looks like this, that means that one of your equations is this, zero is equal to zero. That is, you have an identity, which means that you have an infinite number of solutions. And therefore, you uh, have to parametrize uh, your solution set. We'll go ahead and see how that's done in this example. So solve this system. We're going to go ahead and write it as an augmented matrix. Now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and decide how to force a one in this position. You could divide that entire row by two, but you would get fractions. And so I think it's much easier to swap rows one and two. So I'll write that down below row one is being interchanged with row two. And that's all you really have to write. Be very careful when you rewrite that because you might end up visually mixing numbers up. If you suffer from dyslexia or something like that, this is working with matrices can be very terrible because you will miswrite quite a bit. So just be very aware of any issues you might have when working with mathematics. If you constantly miswrite things, matrices you're going to have to be really careful with. Anyhow, that being said, let's go ahead and use this main diagonal element, the very first one here, to kill off everything below, right? So this is, again, what we've been doing all along, but now we'll just go ahead and complete this out. So let me write down my uh, instructions just in case I make a mistake so I can review. So I'm going to take negative twice. Oops. It was supposed to be a two and I was already starting with the row. Negative twice row one and add that to row two to become the new row two. And I'll take three times row one, add that to row three to become the new row three. Doing that, uh, let me go ahead and just get the skeletal framework going. Notice the only thing that doesn't change here we have row two and row three, they're changing, but row one is not. So one, zero, three, and that two kind of remain concrete. Let's go ahead and take negative twice that row one and add that to row two. Well, negative two plus two is zero. Negative two times zero is zero plus negative three is still a negative three. Negative two times three is negative six. 
minus 9 is a negative 15. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, minus 5 is a negative 9. So that finishes that out. Now we'll go ahead and take that first row, multiply it by a 3, and add it to the third row. And let's see, we get 3 plus a negative 3, that's 0. 3 times 0 plus 1 is 1. 3 times 3 was 9, minus 4 is 5. And 3 times 2 is a 6, uh, minus 3 is a 3. All right, that work is done. Now you have your option. So we have successfully made that into a 1 and killed everything below. Perfect. Now, I'd like to make that into a one if I can, and you actually can. You divide that row two by a negative three. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in here. Uh, negative one third times row two becomes the new row two. And when you do that, something special happens. I'm gonna rewrite row one. And again, multiply row two by a negative one third. One, five, and three and notice that is exactly the same as row three if you notice that then you know there's an infinite number of solutions but if you don't notice that you could still kind of keep forward with the method so the method really doesn't change you could use this element to kill all elements below so i'm going to take the opposite of row two and add it to row three to become the new row three. So really the method doesn't actually change. You don't, it, even if you don't notice, it doesn't really change. I'm just gonna take the opposite of that and rewrite this whole thing. So our row one has not changed. Our row two actually has not changed. Zero, one, five, and three. Now we'll take the opposite of row th two and add to row three. And when you do that, you get this. That tells me right there, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight this uh, to showcase this. This right here tells me that zero is equal to zero, or in other words, uh, infinite solutions. S-O-L-N-S means solutions to me. So at this point, I would uh, still continue forward with the uh, elimination method. However, this is something we haven't talked about with Gauss-Jordan elimination and how this runs. Because normally speak, normally when you're dealing with systems of equations and Gauss-Jordan elimination, uh, you do this with square matrices. In other words, three by three systems or four by four systems or five by five systems or something like that. And really what we're going to be working with from this point forward is a two by three system or a system of two equations with three unknowns, um, which is a, an underdetermined system is what we'd call that. Not that you need to know that, but, but anyhow, so your tactic doesn't really change that much, but at this point I would go ahead and s switch back to uh, a system of a, or writing an equation form and then solving uh, and there is a very specific reason for that one uh, the main reason is that i just don't want to go into the messy details of what you would have to do in regular situations but two generally when you're first learning this you're only going to be doing this with three by three systems maybe four by four systems but nothing larger so it really is pretty safe to say okay once i get down to this form once i know that i have an infinite number of solutions and i've pretty much finished out the main diagonal notice the main diagonal is all ones except for that guy right there that um you wanted to be one at the bottom right hand corner but for some reason it just turned into a zero. Oh well in that case you can now transform it back to equations and say, well, this tells me that 1x plus 3z is equal to 2, and 1y plus 5z is equal to 3. Those are the only two equations that actually matter in this system. And solve the first one for x. So x is equal to 2 minus 3z. Solve the second one for y, y is equal to 3 minus 5z, 
and Z is allowed to be a free roaming parameter. So that is the parametrization of the solutions to the system. However, most instructors will require that you do not say, write everything in terms of Z. Instead, they say, please write everything in terms of T. So instead of Zs, I would say these are Ts, that's all. That's a reparametrization. So your solution would be two minus three T, three minus five T, T, where T is allowed to be anything you want it to be. All X and Y will be determined once you determine what T is. That's how you solve a system using Gauss-Jordan elimination if it has an infinite number of solutions. Now, I do want to add an addendum here. Let's suppose, just as an example, that you were working with, and I'll use a different color for this, that you're working with a larger system. And let's suppose that this larger system ended up something like this. One, 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 one. Uh, let's pretend that this was zero, zero, one, 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 one. I'm just making my life easy here. And this is zero, 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 one, one, one. And this is zero, 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 one, one. And then finally zero, 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 and zero. That is, you had one, two, three, four, five equations. And you had one, two, three, four, five unknowns initially. So it was a five by five system. But when you solved it out, you end up getting something like this. Notice you have a bottom row of zeros. Well, that bottom row of zeros tells me there's an infinite number of solutions. You could still back solve here just like we have been, but it's a little bit messier when you do this. So here's what you normally would do. And I didn't have to do it in this case because it was already in a format that I wanted. But here's how it works. By the time you get a full row of zeros, you will have a set of diagonal elements. Basically the first element in each row. The first non-zero, I should say, element in each row I have highlighted, right? So those are all the first non-zero elements in each row. At that point, you can use those non-zero elements in each of those rows to kill everything above. I could have said that over here. I could have said, okay, go to the first non-zero elements in each row and kill everything above. But look, everything above was already zero. So I didn't have to do anything. But there are those cases, and they are actually pretty frequent. You occur, they, they occur frequently where you get to this row of zeros right here. And at that point you say, wow, I have an infinite number of solutions. So I'm gonna have a parametrized set of solutions. Yep, you sure will. But you could still make your life a little bit easier by taking those first elements of each of those rows and using them to kill the stuff above. So in this case, I would take the opposite of row four and add it to rows two, uh, sorry, three, two, and one. So I'm gonna chicken scratch this out a little bit here. Uh, just making this, notice, notice that the fifth row never changes. So it's zero, 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 augmented with zero. Row four actually does not change either. Zero, 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 one, one. Now take the opposite of row four and add it to row three. So that'd be zero plus zero, zero plus zero, zero plus zero, zero plus one, and negative one plus one, negative one plus one. Then you take the opposite of row four and add it to row two. Zero plus zero, zero plus zero, zero plus one. Uh, let's see, zero plus one, negative one plus one, negative one plus one. And then finally, the opposite of row four added to row one, zero plus one, zero plus one, zero plus one, zero plus one, negative one plus one, and negative one plus one. So again, when you get down to that, uh, those, uh, the row of zeros there, 
basically when you're done killing everything below. Uh, you get these first elements in each row, and those are actually called pivots. You don't really need to know that, but that's actually what they're called. They're called the pivots. And so you're just essentially using those pivots to kill everything above. So now we're going to use the next pivot to kill everything above. So it is basically the same method. Nothing's really changed, but this just showcases, even if you have an infinite number of solutions, you can continue out the Gauss Jordan technique here. So let's go ahead and take the opposite of row three and add it to rows two and one. Row five does not change. Row four does not change. Row three actually does not change either. Row two will change. You're going to take the opposite of row three and add it to row two. So it's zero plus zero, zero plus zero, zero plus one, negative one plus one, zero plus zero, and zero plus zero. And take the opposite of row three and add it to row one. Uh, zero plus one is one, zero plus one is one, zero plus one is one, negative one plus one is zero, zero plus zero, zero plus zero. And finally, and this literally is finally, uh, at least for all these types of manipulations, you're going to take the opposite of row two and add it to row three or to row one to kill off that guy right there. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to copy and paste it. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this whole silly thing, except I need to get the whole thing. I'll copy that and then I'll go ahead and paste it and throw it down below and get to my blue pen. I'm using the opposite of that to kill off this. And there really is nothing else that gets killed off there. So I, I don't have to rewrite anything. Now notice this is not exactly uh, nice. Let's call this uh, X, Y, nope. Let's call this R, S, T, X, and Y. That's what we'll call those columns. Let's just pretend. So this tells us that one R plus one S plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is equal to zero. And then it tells us that T is equal to zero, that X is equal to zero, and that Y is equal to one. Again, Y, one Y is equal to one, one X is equal to zero, one T is equal to zero, but then R plus S is equal to zero. Notice I don't have a, an equation for S, well, I can easily, I could just say S is just S. S is just S. And so R is going to be the opposite of S. S will be S. T will be always zero. X will always be zero. And Y will always be one. Now, normally we'd say parametrize this, right? Create a new variable. Um, I think most professors would have you do that. So T is already taken. I'm just going to call this happy face. That's the variable I'm using. And so our ordered set of solutions is negative happy face for R, happy face for S, zero, zero, and one. So this is just to showcase that you can still finish out Gauss Jordan elimination if you want to, because it does actually lead to very nice, uh, clean, easy working solutions. But there is the infinite case for you. And um, mainly they're not going to be as bad as the ones in blue ink. They're going to be like the one in the black ink to the left hand side. All right. In the next video, we'll talk about what happens if you have no solutions. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. For what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close, don't talk too much, that isn't code. Sure, you may really hurt inside, it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.